Hello and welcome to Books Without Barcodes, where I review books without a barcode. If you didn't know, barcodes were mandatory on all printed matter uh, April 1978, so that means I'm reviewing a book printed before 19, April of 1978. This book in particular, Inferio by Jack Vance, was printed originally in hardcover in 1969. This is the first paperback edition from Dell, so this was printed in 1970. And you can see why I decided to pick this book up. However, despite what the nippleage would uh, make you think, uh, this is not a very salacious novel. Uh, in fact, that is probably my main complaint about this book, is that this cover, I read the entire thing and was so perplexed as to why they decided to depict a uh, groinless, nipply man on the cover other than to entice someone to purchase the book, uh, which worked because that's why I picked it up. Also because I knew Jack Vance was a very prolific mystery, sci-fi, and fantasy writer. Uh, Jack Vance, as an author, born in 1916, died in 2013, and was a very, very avid writer, prolific writer from, you know, 1950s. He actually started writing in the pulps uh, in the World War II, and then actually started to write full-length novels uh, in 1950 to 2009. So he pretty much wrote almost until he unfortunately passed away. Uh, he's also a three-time Hugo Award winner, so his writing is supposedly very, very good. Um, this is my only foray into one of his books. Uh, it's 220 pages long. This edition is 220 pages long, and it took me four and a half hours to read this book. It's not very thick. It's not very girthy. And um, I have some thoughts <laughs> about this book. The overall story is quite good. Um, like the underlying story is very much uh, a protestations to the pitfalls of capitalism or capitalist society. Uh, that's kind of what he's writing about here. However, the very first chapter that you read in this book, it's like very much like a torturous horror type of setting. Um, which when you read it as your first like chapter, like that's your, your catcher, like that's that's the thing that's going to grab your attention. I was like, okay, well, this is going to be quite the book if this is how we're setting up the start of the story. And then it went into long world building exposition that wasn't, in my opinion, long enough. There were also some formatting choices that he made in this book, which messed with me. I don't know if it's just personally as a reader, um, the formatting for me was an interesting decision. Instead of uh, doing more exposition and world building in chapter format, like talking about certain systems, uh, social systems within the world that he is building in Inferio, he instead makes footnotes <laughs> where he will talk about something and it's this specific thing. He'll mention it in casual writing and then when you get down to the there'll be a little asterisk that you barely notice. It looks like maybe something might have just like been off on the printing and then at the very bottom of the page he expounds in a sentence what it is he was talking about. So if you're just reading from top to bottom, uh, especially if you someone like myself who reads very quickly, you read the whole thing and you're like, wait, what a second? I don't understand. And then you realize, oh, this is a formatting choice. Let me read the sentence where this is referenced and then I can read this aside and then go back down and now I understand what is going on. I personally would have preferred him to expound upon the social structures that he decided to instead footnote uh, for brevity's sake, I guess. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but it is only a pitfall in the beginning of the book. So in the first like third of the book, he does this sparingly, but still noticeably to the point where it was a little bit like what is happening. And then 
The other formatting choice that was made that also threw me off in my reading of this book and subsequently my enjoyment is, as I mentioned, the very first chapter is a, a torturous, like, it's a really good first chapter to get you to want to read this book. Um, but once I got towards the end of the book, I didn't know where that scene went. You know, sometimes when you read, like, it's a, it's a typical theme that writers have where they put, like, something in the crux of the story at the very first chapter to get you to want to read it. And, you know, by the time you get to that part of the story, it's very, like, mentally you know where that part of the story is supposed to lie that grabbed you at the beginning. This one, I had to reread a couple of the chapters to try to mentally, like, acrobatically figure out where the heck that initial chapter went in the book. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, could it fit here? Where is this at? Because it's like, because he made that first chapter in there, he like stopped abruptly in one scene and then started abruptly in another scene. And that is where that chapter is supposed to go. But there is not really enough uh, context clues at the end of one chapter and the beginning of that other chapter that tells you that that's where that first chapter is supposed to go. It was very frustrating when I got to that part and also kind of like made the climax of the story uh, a little bit less enjoyable. That's some um, phrasing there, but that is how I felt. It was just like, wait, I had to start over and figure out where that went and I did not enjoy that and uh, wish that that had not been a thing. Also, again, we're gonna go back to the nippleage here. Like you would think this might be a very sexy story or a sexy man or something, but no, in fact, the female characters in this book were perfunctory at best. They, they just feel like they were in there as mild character devices for the main character. It was legitimately, there was a sex scene, but it was the most chaste sex scene I have ever read, where it was just like, well, I know you expect me to write them having sex, so here it is, okay, bye. And then it's just, this man had no sex drive, which is fine, you know. There, there are plenty of good literary works where the character is completely asexual. There's nothing wrong with being ace in general. It's just that this cover and the first chapter uh, make you feel like that's not going to be the case there. And then you are just like headfirst drawn into this world building exposition. The thing is, is that the world that Jack Vance builds, I found myself more interested in learning about the main character's dad's life and wanting more exposition about his story than Inferio. Like I, I found that more than once thinking that the main character of this book is not the main character in this person's life. And that in fact actually was his dad. Ambroy is the world. It's like this, um, the planet that these human people live on. And there is a definite class society where you have these craftsmen that are gilded and there is a rating system for the craftsmen and based on the craft, the quality of the craft that you perform, you get some kind of uh, credit that you can spend on things on the planet. It is very much like wage slavery and that is kind of what the whole premise of the book is, is explaining that pitfall. It just, it's just interesting. Um, it, it, it does not, the first, like I said, I enjoyed the story. It was a good story. I do recommend you read it just because uh, it's very good um, commentary on some of the pitfalls of capitalism, especially, you know, given present day society, you know, how we went through a global pandemic and Jeffrey Bezos came out with way more money at the beginning of the pandemic uh, than, well, at the end of the pandemic than at the beginning. So, you know, how the rich can get richer and the poor stay poor. Um, so it's a good read for that. Uh, it's a good like mental exercise, but again, I would have preferred more exposition on the world building. I would have preferred 
a second book maybe to this about his dad and his dad's life because he seemed way cooler uh, in the book. Uh, and yeah, that that's it. Uh, this book right now, if you are a reseller, because I know some of you that are on here uh, do book reselling as well, this is only $5 if you're interested in getting this book for yourself and uh, don't have the luck of finding it at an estate sale or at your local thrift store for really cheap. I'm selling it for $5. Uh, I'll put the link down below. However, uh, if you find the original 1969 hardcover, it's blue. It has a much more fitting uh, graphic on the front than this one. I will put that here. If you find that book, the original first printing hardcover sells around $150, $200 based on the um, condition. So, Vario, good read. I'm interested to read more by Jack Vance. Some formatting issues, overall good social commentary about capitalism. Uh, I, I don't call him a space pirate. The space pirate thing up here is very misleading. It says only the space pirate could find the secret that would save his people. At no point is this... There's like two chapters talking about space piracy. The rest of the book is literally just world building. So there's this book. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.